Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Tuesday, August 16th, around 1 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. The sun has gone wild. It's been quiet for a while, but a series of eruptions, coronal mass ejections, are cannibalizing and they're coming on the 18th and that's the big story cannibal coronal mass ejections to trigger geomagnetic storms on august 18th we're looking for power grid fluctuations and low latitude aurora keep calm it's boom time now the monsoons mark grand canyon lifts water measures and utah rain totals are going up in many areas in the four quarters this is one of the best monsoon seasons in years. Grand Canyon National Park officials announced Monday they are lifting mandatory water conservation measures on the South Rim because water storage has returned to acceptable levels. That's good news. The area normally receives 2.6 inches of rain in July and August. It has already received 4.94 inches with a little more than two full weeks left in August, according to Weather Service data. That's amazing. The National Centers for Environmental Information also notes that Arizona's average of 2.47 inches last month placed as the state's 25th wettest on record. So that's good news. Uh, what else do we have in here? Water is available at the Supai Tunnel North Kaibab Trail. Above normal fall in Utah, nearly two inches of rain collected in Utah in the last month is above the 1.5 inches normally collected. And that is good news for Utah's extreme drought, which is all but withered away. Many people are using the shrinking salt lake. Uh, many climate alarmists use the shrinking salt lake as, and they blame it on you and part of the proof that climate change is happening. Now, the reality is that the Great Salt Lake was once 20,000 square miles about 10,000 years ago, and it's been drying up ever since. So it's not a recent phenomenon. The Great Salt Lake is simply the remnant of Lake Bonneville, one of the largest inland, inland lakes during the Pleistocene. And as I said, and as we read, the Four Corners region, well, is getting a reprieve and Lake Mead is rising rapidly. It hasn't been ever risen in the summer in recent memory. And here we can see rapid rising in Lake Mead, which is good news. And you can see there's almost no exceptional drought left except for two small pockets in Nevada, which is good news. There's only one area left with a large area of exceptional drought, and that is Southern and Central California. And that triggered 4 million Southern Californians being asked to stop watering outdoors for 15 days starting September 6th. So we'll see how that goes. And this could help because there is no rain on the horizon. There's tons of rain for South Texas. A Gulf disturbance has been drenching that drought-stricken area, and that means flash flooding, but it also means good news. There's actually precipitation there. The tenacious late disturbance rolling through South Texas, resembling an island tropical depression on both satellite and radar this morning, has rung up some impressive rainfall total since coming ashore early Sunday. Most uh, areas in South Texas have recorded four to six inches of rain over the past 24 hours with isolated totals exceeding eight inches. So good news for South Texas and bad news uh, for people in the area of flash floods. There is a tropical disturbance that's moving over Nicaragua and Honduras now. It may cross uh, across the Yucatan Peninsula here and redevelop in the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll keep a close eye on that. That is the only tropical disturbance we really have to worry about right now. Now, there is some more drought to discuss. Northeastern farmers are facing new challenges with severe drought. And this is up in uh, Rhode Island, and a couple people have contacted me from Vermont. They say it's very nerve wracking when you're grazing six to 700 cattle um, and there's no grass, it's basically dead. But there's good news coming to the Northeast. The models are showing that the Northeast is gonna be picking up four to five inches of rain, New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, all of New England will be quite wet in the coming weeks, which is good news. The bad news is that you could see this dry hole in California. There is no precipitation for most um, of Oregon and most of Washington for the next two weeks, nothing. Big winter chicken dinner, Southern Oklahoma and Texas could be seeing up to 14 inches over the next 14 days, hey, hey. <laughs> 
Excessive heat for the south and west. Flash flooding conditions in the southwest U.S. Dangerous heat is expected across portions of the lower Mississippi Valley. You can see those areas in Peach here as well as up and down the west coast. Eastern Oregon Wednesday, Central California through Wednesday, and Washington State through Saturday. Excessive heat warnings are in effect. Monsoonal showers and thunderstorms may result in flash flooding and debris flows in the southwest, so check it out, especially if you're in the green areas. Click on your county for more information, and there's that tropical depression wreaking havoc on that tip of Texas, maybe. It's moved in all the way there now. So let's take a look at some of this excessive heat, and you can see it's going to be hot in the valleys, especially... Uh, southwestern Arizona and Death Valley. And that heat is just going to persist. There it is again. It's going to, by Wednesday, move all the way up to Washington State where some of the deserts there are going to be 103, 108. Cali, take a look at that. The heat is going to persist through Thursday, 110 in California, 108. These might be close to record, but this is the hottest time of the year, so not unprecedented at all. Most of the country is going to be quite cool overall as we move into the end of August. Seismic update. No quakes of note, which is good news when we have so much space weather to discuss. Worldwide volcano news update. Couple new volcanoes to add to the list. Ebo puffing and passing to 10,000 feet. Fuego to 14,000 feet. Ibico to 9,000 feet. And we already talked about the seismic swarm in the Samoan Islands. This is a shield volcano, so it will not be explosive if it does erupt. Cerro Hudson, on the other hand, is explosive in southern Chile, and there was a hybrid earthquake there. That means tectonic plus volcanic. So keep a close eye on there for a potential puff, puff pass. You could see there's tons of ash and soot around this volcano. So it is quite active. Novato de Ruiz to 22,000, and Semaru to 14,000. And we get back to where we've already discussed since yesterday. Now, a new map has come out of the Iceland eruption, and it is the Maradalir lava thickness map. If that interests you, uh, links to all this will be below the video. And we're off to space weather. Here we are. It goes X-ray flux, one-minute data, and we can see the peak of this cacophony of events. Beginning just about 36 hours ago, plasma filament released, multiple C flares, multiple M flares, with the maximum an M5 happening just about 12 hours ago. And we have a cannibal coronal mass ejection scenario. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means the initial filament that came off was not that fast. The subsequent coronal mass ejections afterwards were much faster, and they catch up with the initial CME, and they all stack up together. That's called a cannibal coronal mass ejection, and it is to trigger geomagnetic storms on August 18th, we could be looking for power grid fluctuations, low latitude auroras, communication satellites, and other strange phenomenon like, well, we'll wait and see. So keep a close eye out. And if you get any bizarre things happening, send us an email at oppenheimerranch at gmail.com as we keep a close eye. Here's the most recent event that's modeled. This is one of three events that are stacked up together that are coming to Earth on the 18th. And this is just the most recent event. What I mean by that is this model is showing all of the events stacking up. And we'll look at it blown up in just a second here. But let's read what spaceweather.com has to say. Solar activity has been high. Active sunspot region AR3078 has been flaring almost constantly since it developed a Delta-class magnetic field early yesterday. The strongest flare so far was an M5 category explosion on August 16th, and it produced a shortwave radio blackout over the Indian Ocean. A series of coronal mass ejections associated with these flares could start grazing Earth's magnetic field during the late hours of the 18th, and this is going to go on for quite some time, maybe 24 hours or more. And so this is a potential cannibal CME event. You can click on all these underlined areas to go look at what he's describing here. Um, the M5 category explosion, there's an image here, so let's just click on that, and there we can see the M5. Just that simple and user-friendly over here. The radio blackout over the Indian Ocean, right there. We can go back and see that. And so, let's take a look at the potential cannibal event close up here. And we can see the initial plasma filament comes out here, and then a CME and another CME comes out here. And they're all going to meet up for boom time, right around there. We can see here the model on the spike in the plasma. KP6 is probably what this is 
showing us, and that is what the official forecast is. KP6 for the three-day forecast, peaking at KP6 on August 18th and dropping back down into geomagnetic instability. We'll see how accurate this is. This is a great test for our waning magnetosphere and for what future larger events from potential large X flares could bring to planet Earth. Here we are at the Soho Movie Theater where we're looking at the last few days worth of data. And that is a really, really active pattern if I say so myself. So let's just take a look at that for a little bit. Beautiful sun. Now scientists build a magnet in China that's a million times stronger than Earth's magnetic core. Well, what could go wrong? Ding dong. A couple cool tidbits before we finish up. The first is Denali, or Denali, is now claiming to be the tallest mountain in the world. It's much Less altitude than Everest, in fact, much less. In fact, it's only, yeah, Denali measures 6,000 feet higher in vertical rise than Everest. This is what the argument is. Mount Everest is 29,032 feet, and the vertical rise from the base to the top of Mount Everest is only 17,000 feet, when actually at Denali, when you sit at the bottom here and look up, you're looking at 20,000 foot of vertical rise. That's insane. That's four miles vertical, and which makes Denali one of the most difficult mountains to climb. So let's just get that cleared up. The most vertical rise on any mountain is definitely Denali because it starts very low near sea level and goes up 20,000 feet to the summit. Absolutely beautiful and sacred, the mountain. Denali. Now, here's a really awesome archaeological find. Romanian archaeologists unearthed gold-filled grave from 4500 BC. That's 6,500 years ago. Now, while performing excavations near the city of Biharia in Romania, archaeologists working for the Taril, the TCM or an Oradia unearthed a prehistoric grave that dates back into antiquity, 6,500 years into antiquity. The discovery in Romania of a woman's grave is remarkable enough, but what made this particular unprecedented find was the incredible amount of gold rings and gold, which you can see here. Look at this. There's hundreds of them. In fact, it's the most gold in any grave site, not only in this region of Romania, but anywhere in all of Europe for all of history. That's quite a bit of gold. Yeah. The rings are undoubtedly the prize discovery. These ultra-rare ancient golden items were displayed via video screen during the museum's press conference announcing the, uh, announcing the exciting find. The hoard will be presented to the public at the museum later on after radiocarbon dating tests are performed and DNA analysis on the woman's skeletal remains are completed. So amazing stuff. Now this is coming from the Tiz... Polgar culture, or the Tiza culture, which all is in the same area of Hungary, or Western Romania, Eastern Slovakia, or even the Ukraine in Central Europe. And here it is, the Tizpar region, which was occupied 6,500 years ago. Now here's a reconstruction of the type of houses that they may have lived in, based on archaeological evidence. Looks very much like a modern house today in many places of the world. And what I find interesting is the reconstruction of the interior here with Squatter Man on the wall. Amazing. And here's some of the pottery that's 6,500 years old, you know, back when we were hunter-gatherers. Or so they say. Absolutely amazing. All links will be below. And that is a boom to knowledge. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our new Patreons. We love you. We especially love the heroes that share this video. And that's a boom. Be safe. We love you.